Hey guys, Charlie Murphy here. Thanks for watching. I'm going to show an update on the MDA Wizard. Spent a lot of time the past two weeks or so uh, updating and revising the code, squashing some bugs, adding some new functionality. Also have some logo concept designs. I'll put a link in the comments. Would very much appreciate your feedback on which ones you like or don't like. Uh, but we'll jump right into it. You know, same as we showed last time, you can pick a couple of different uh, pool aliases, starting with a hand history exported from GTO bots playing against each other. Uh, I personally have a handful of different databases, um, Bovada regs and fish with exposed hole cards and ACR regs data mine. Uh, stable I do some work with that has a group of players that are winning over Bovada, over a million hand sample in the past year. Uh, myself and a couple other poker friends or students that have given me their databases to work with them on. And then a handful of players who I don't know personally, but are well-respected, regular, in some cases high-stakes crushers, or we can get some insight on their game uh, from the pool data mines as well. Uh, first and foremost, we'll start with the pre-flop overview. You know, so you start and you get your general stats like V-Pit, Preflop, Raise. Uh, then we've got some defense against Raise for Sin type stuff. How often players are defending big blind in position against RFIs and how often they're three betting and squeezing. Uh, compare the GTO stats to, to the player pool. You can use that for comparing your own stats, how close you are to GTO. You can use it for seeing where the pool as a whole or individual players are deviating from theory to design some exploitative strategies around that. Um, you know, and you can do that for any any stat or any formation that we're looking at here. Uh, your post-flop aggression shows how often the players are winning when they saw the flop turn of the river, overall post-flop aggression, as well as street-specific post-flop aggression. Showdown tendencies, adding how often the players are winning or going to showdown, and how often they're winning at showdown when they're betting or raising the river. This is really useful for pool analysis where you don't have exposed hole cards to get their range composition. You can find out how often they're betting the river and getting called and being good, which is a good way to indicate just how often they're getting caught bluffing. Same idea with raising. I got a basic uh, overview of how players are playing on raised pot, on opens pots, how often they're raising first in from various positions, as well as a little bit of open limping from the, the small blind, blind on blind from the regs. And you've got your three bet and four bet defense, in position, out of position, how often you're raising back over the top, and then you've got you know, some cold four bet stuff, cold calling three bets, stuff like that. Going further through the preflop. Here's a raise first then analysis where you get some sizing breakdowns by, by each particular position. Uh, I can also add that in for the isolation raises. Don't yet have that, but most of the functionality is there on the back end. Now we're going to take a look at defending the big blind or, or small blind or in position against a raise first in. Uh, this right here is showing you, first of all, how often both the pool, uh, the red pool and the GTO bots are defending big blind versus small blind or big blind versus other positions, then a sizing breakdown as well. Let's really quickly take a look at and see where players are struggling to defend against various sizes. Uh, can add some more complex GTO bots in here for at least preflop sizing as well to see how the how the pool is and should be defending against various open sizes as opposed to the most common 3x blind on blind or the 2.5x. Same idea here, except this is going to be for when you're in the small blind, uh, not showing the fold percentages here because we're just interested in the raising and the calling. So I cropped that out to make it a little bit more easy on the eyes so the data is more useful. So it's not going to be a 15 plus percent of folds where the rest is mostly raising. But same idea here, overall raise and call strategy versus the raise first then when you're in the small blind and then versus the various sizing to see how that impacts the response. And then of course the, uh, you know, the free play positions in position, how often players are calling and three betting as well. You know, what we're generally seeing is they kind of under defend the big blind still slightly and then they're probably over defending from the free positions and usually cold calling a bit more than the bots would do. Uh, this this pool is also going to be a higher rake situation than the GTO bots as well, so the calling is going to be even more out of line to where it should be. Uh, other preflop stuff, take a look at defending three bets uh, in position and then out of position next. Same idea as the defending versus RFI. Here's your button RFI versus a blind three bet against the various sizes, how often your 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 player pool or yourself, if you're looking at yourself here, is fold calling and raising against the various sizes as well as overall. 
we get that in each proper positional breakdown right there so you can further design your strategies based around what the pool is doing or figure out where you're maybe too loose or too tight with your own defenses same idea here except now we're in the out of position half of things so this is when you're the small blind and face the big blind three bat you know or, or cut off first button middle position versus in position under the gun versus in position so these are when you're raising early on and get three betted by an in position player uh same idea here along with the four bets mm -hmm. you know just for four betting as opposed to three betting again in position versus out of position setups got them for both I think you're getting the point i won't go through the last one but you've kind of got the idea of how this is all supposed to work uh next up when you go to the post flop stuff it'll start giving us some options here with your flop turn river nodes and your post flop filters details and textures we'll start here just with any particular formation uh you know for example we'll just look at how how the bots and how the player pool is dealing with uh river bets how often they're folding on the river so we'll do any flop any turn river folding or check folding whether you're in or out of position for any possible formation whether you're in position out of position single race pots three bets or four bet pots go ahead and we'll pull that up so very up in the upper left hand corner you're going to see the fold call and raise frequencies here uh, taking a look here, the red pool is folding on the river more so than the GTO bots are, at least in a global sense. We'll look at some size-specific stuff to see if that's still going to carry and be accurate. Calling slightly less, folding a good bit more, looks like 47 to 52, about a 5% global overfold. Missing about a percent of the calls and missing about 4 or 5% of the raises. So you can see where they're falling short on their river defenses and in, in what specific versions, whether it's calling too much, too little, raising too much, too little, or both. Uh, next, you've got the range composition and range split. So this upper middle tab is or plot is going to show you first the overall range you get to that spot with. Um, I think that's a very useful feature because it's gonna show you, are you messing up your fold call and raise ranges because you're making poor decisions in that node or are you getting to that node poorly? Uh, what we're seeing right here is, um, you know, the GTO bots here, it looks like they are getting to the river slightly more air than the regs are. Uh, looks like low pair is pretty similar. The regs are getting to the river with a little bit more mid pair uh top pair only off by about a percent and then two pair plus within about a percent so slight deviations over here in the global sense nothing too drastic jumps out at me and then we're taking a look at the range composition of folding calling and raising um you know when you're facing that river bet here in this particular line which again is any flop line any turn line and then river facing the bet <laughs> Looks like the regs, uh, the regs folding range here they've got less air than the bots do uh, they're folding two pair plus a little bit more uh, than the bots are. They're folding top pair a little bit more, folding middle pair a little bit more. So it looks like they're kind of folding some of those short on value hens a bit more often. And as a result, they've got less air in their range. Same idea for call and for raise. Then over here is looking at that same idea range composition from the flip side. It's when you have a certain hand class, how often are you fold calling or raising versus that bet? So here, the regs are folding their air, which is going to largely be what the, what the bots are calling is going to be some strong ace highs. Pretty much anything weaker than a low pair is going to be in the air, the air category on the river. Um, you know, and then again here, the low, low pair is folding more often um, than the bots would. Middle pair slightly more, top pair slightly more. So it looks like every hand class, when they get to the river, the regs are folding a bit more often than the bots would be. Uh, and looks like obviously raising these nutted hands a bit less, raising, raising top pairs and over pairs much less than the bots are. Bots are finding 12% raise with top pair, one pair hands versus four. And then uh, of the two pair plus hands, regs are raising river about 30%, whereas the bots are doing about 38%. So it looks like the regs are, at least in this pool, are missing some of the value raises and the thinner value raises. Um, you know, and then what we have down here, actually we'll, we'll apply a couple of filters first to show you how that will work. Uh, if you want to take a look at you know, how, how, the, how the regs and how the bots are folding in that particular line, but you want to look at specifically say against overbets we'll add the overbet filter right here and rerun it now those top three rows are going to be any formation fold and river after any flop and turn line 
against specifically against over bets. And now we're seeing the regs overfolding by a couple percent, calling pretty good, but raising a raising less. Looks like there's about a two percent to overfold, and it's largely coming from them not finding raises. Um, same idea over here. Here's the range composition, how far they're folding, calling, and raising against the overbet, and what they're doing with the various hand classes, how they're splitting the hand classes between fold, call, and raise against an overbet. Uh, you can also do things like I want to look at specific formations. So I want to see when it's a late formation where the button raises first Then We can go ahead and change our filters, rerun it. Now we're getting the same thing. It's not filtered by river size. This is for all river bet sizes, but it's going to be showing you and specifically in the button raised in raised first in formations, how these factors change. Uh, if you want to go ahead and add textures, you can add textures and filters together for most of these stats. So let's go ahead and take a look at, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Let's just pick one kind of at random. Let's look at, let's look at the ace over card river. Take that filter off for a minute. And so now we're taking a look at how often the bots and the regs are folding to the river bets in this formation in line, specifically on ace over card rivers. Looks like they're over folding by a few percent on that one globally. Again, there's nuance within the sizing, so you have to go ahead and look in more detail before we jump to obvious conclusions. Um, but I'll show you that in a moment. But same idea here, you're now applying whatever texture filter you want. Now, so these are all going to be the range compositions and range splits for that particular line on an ace river over card. Uh, I think that's a pretty good descriptor right here. And I'll show you some of the options down here, some of your detail options. The default one I'm going to use for position uh, or for formations that do have positional um, nuance, pretty much anything that's not blind versus blind is going to be first showing you by position. So you start here, you give it the fold river line. This is showing you how the fold frequency varies based on whether the, uh, whether the raise first in comes from a small blind button cut up middle position or under the gun. And you also get in the range composition down here by position. Um, probably going to be more useful for taking a look at a river bet line. I think it'll illustrate the example a bit better. So I'll switch over to that. So now this is any river bet in any formation, any flop and turn line. So here we're seeing how uh, the frequencies vary. Looks like looks like uh, the blind versus blind spots, the regs are not betting the river quite as much. Overall, bet frequency looks pretty damn close for the river here in these other spots. Looks like under the gun, they're a bit more passive and reserved. And then you get the range composition right here. So up at the top, you've got your overall range composition, your checking composition, and your betting composition for the various bet sizes. Uh, and then down here, we're seeing how that overall range composition varies um, based on the position that you're in, which is useful to see if players are being more bluffy or more aggressive as the formation varies. Uh, like, look here, blind versus blind, you know, the, the air component is up by about 4%. That's significant. So there's a, there's a good example of it right there. Um, button, more, more air in the button. Uh, button formation, river bedding ranges, uh, and it starts to fade away as the as the positions get to be a bit tighter, um, which of course is common sense, and a lot of recent MDA has shown that over the years, but nice to see the more recent uh, data still bearing that out. You know, under the gun, looks like that uh, the air bet frequency is pretty low, the low bet frequency, which is often considered to be bluffs in most cases, that looks to be right on line, and then you're starting to get a little bit separation here as you get later on. Looks like slightly more air and low pair or aggregate of the two starting from the cutoff and getting a little bit more pronounced as you get to later formations. Um, pretty interesting right there. And then we'll take a look at various textures. So this is going to give you the uh, flop, turn, or river textures um, details across all the textures that are in the system right here. So Upper upper row is your just kind of global, any river bet, any formation, um, any any texture. And then down here, we're taking a look at how the various flops, ace, king, queen, high, etc., different versions of pair, different suitness, rainbow, monotone, uh, two-tone. Two-tone's missing. I'll have to fix that. That's supposed to be in there. Uh, and then various levels of connectedness. And you're also getting the range splits here for how, for how often the betting or whichever line you're looking at, folding, calling, raising, etc. However, those range uh, compositions change based on the filter. You can pull all that up with the click of a button. And then last but most certainly not least, we're going to take a look at the sizing specific stuff. Switch back to the fold node for a minute because I think it makes more sense in that context. 
Uh, but so the, again, this is any any formation, any flop, any turn facing a river bet, how often they're folding. The uh, the plots are the actual observed data points from the data, you know, showing how often the blue line, the GTO bots are folding against the various size that's observed. Red dots are the regs. Legend very clearly shows that at the top. And then the line is a best fit line and estimate to try to show you where the system thinks that these uh these uh full frequencies would fall across all possible bet sizes. I think it's a pretty clever way to kind of see where which sizes they're either over or under folding against. See right around here, some of these more common sizes, the pool has gotten pretty sharp for the most part, at least globally speaking. Uh looks like they're still struggling with some of the elastic aspects of things, which is not necessarily uncommon at some of the trickier parts of poker, especially in the more extreme edges. So these real small bet sizes looks like we're getting higher fold frequencies for the regs than we would for the bots. And then up here again in the overbets, I'm guessing if I go ahead and show this to the fish, we're probably going to see uh, a similar trend that's even more extreme. Let's take a look and see if that's the case. In general, fish tend to not be very elastic. Uh, give it a minute while it pulls the fish database in for me out of the cloud and then loads it up. <clears throat> There we go. Not as dramatic as I would have expected, but we're seeing just a... Uh... And it didn't even change the name correctly, so I gotta take a look at a few things to make sure that there's not still a few bugs lingering around in here, but I think we're getting pretty close. And uh, I can also take a look at this for river betting. The best fit line looks a little bit different in that case because uh, the data is more reliable for the bet sizing just by uh, virtue of when you have a chance to bet, you have a chance to bet any size. So which size you choose is pretty relevant even in small samples, whereas your opportunities to fold are bound by the sizes you face and you're not often facing extremely small or extremely large over bets. So the samples and those are going to be a bit noisier, which is why the best fit line tends to take that into account. Here, this is just drawing a line between the observed points. It gives you almost a visual representation of betting volume by either player. Uh, looks like the GTO bots are putting more money into the pot in this range here of bet sizing, a little bit less up here, up around pot. But overall, pretty similar. Uh, but that's the gist of what I've got going on here. You can also apply these various filters, or uh, not textures to the bet sizing stuff, but you can apply the filters. Uh, the textures and bet sizing, aren't. you can't do them both at the same time. Uh, you can, however, use the more specific bet sizing filters like overbet along with, say, ace high flop and pull that up. Uh, but that's about it for now. Thank you for watching. If you want to go ahead and take a look at some of the logo concepts and offer your feedback, I'll put the link in the commentary. Till next time, this is Charlie Murphy signing off.